Folks, Steve Taylor here. This is our 1,000 horsepower mobile boiler room. We're going to go inside, go through in detail, talk about how the unit's built, how we put it together. Let's go inside. Folks, I'm inside the 1,000 horsepower unit. This is number eight and nine, nine and ten, something in there that, that we're building right now. We've had a lot of experience building them. First thing in the front end, water comes in, fresh water comes in. So this, the water softener size for 100% makeup, so they have no condensate return coming back. I still need 1,000 horsepower out of the unit. I have the softer size for that. So 10 grains of hardness, 170 ppm hard water. I've got the softer size to, to feed the boiler at full capacity. We're in good shape. A couple of things we've done with these units, and we'll look at some of the stuff outside, but inside, um, in order to make these things more flexible, um, in order to make them as energy efficient as possible, we've got variable speed drives on all the motors. The feed water pump motors, the blower motor, it's also variable speed drive. So that we don't have that pump running at 3450 RPM all the time, it's running at whatever the, the system needs, whatever the, the uh, customer needs to supply steam to their system. Another thing we've done on our D8 tanks is we have put booster pumps on them. A uh, big problem we have in, the, in these units, as you can see, we have no headroom on the DA tank. We need, you know, TD, um, net positive suction head, which, which is NPSH. We need about 10 feet on that pump. My water level is right here, so I've got maybe four and a half feet. So we put booster pumps on there so we can keep 10 PSI of positive pressure on the end of that pump. That's going to keep those pumps from burning up, extend the life of that pump, make the system a lot more reliable. Um, feed water valve, makeup valve on the tank. Of course, it's we, we can't have on off. We've got a thousand horsepower here, so we that needs to be coming in there at a slow rate. So we've got Donald Miller here with the 7B switch, and we've got a modulating feed valve to feed that water in slowly, keep that tank from dumping up and down, keep everything running smooth. So now we're looking at the deaerator tank. Again, it's a full-size deaerator tank size for that thousand horsepower bore. A lot of things we do in here, we're, we're trying to maintain, hold the temperature down in, in the unit itself. So everything that's hot, all the high piping, steam piping, um, the deer itself, we insulate that, put a jacket on it. Um, just, just keeps everything uh, a lot cooler inside the system. A couple other things we've done over the years that, that ha has helped us in our maintenance issues um, is what we're doing with the floor. We're putting a line X on the floor, charcoal colored line X on the floor. That keeps us from having to paint that thing every time it comes back from a job site. It holds up very well for us, does a good job. The walls of the trailer themselves, we're, we're coating those walls, lining those walls with stainless steel. Again, that, it keeps the unit looking nice. Stainless steel is gonna last forever and it keeps us from having to paint that thing on every project. If, if the job comes back and it's been in a, a rendering plant or a pulp and paper mill, the inside of the unit is nasty. It, it just, they suck all that dust and everything in here. If you have painted walls, painted floors, all that's gotta be cleaned and repainted. With these, wash it out, you're ready to go. A um, Couple other things we've got in here, chemical pumps. We put, a, put two chemical pumps in this system, one for sulfite for the DA, one for uh, phosphate to go into the discharge line, the feed water pump to maintain the, the conductivity, the, keep the minerals, everything in, in shape, keep the chemistry in shape in the water and the boilers themselves. One other thing we, we've got in the front of the unit, we put a, uh, now that you can see it, we put an electric heater in the ceiling up there right by the water softener. It's the coldest part of the unit. So middle of the night, the unit goes down, it's in Minnesota, it's zero. We don't want this thing to freeze up before the techs or the operators can get back in there the next morning. That keeps the water softener, all that cold pipe from freezing up. Everything else will maintain itself for, for several hours, but, but that will not without some, some additional help there. Let's talk about the burning of the controls next. Okay, we have spent you know, the better part of 20 years coming to this design. Uh, we've spent a lot of time over the years what works, what doesn't work. And a lot of things we've put in, into the design of this unit is just from that experience. For instance, all the controls, limit controls, 
um, surface blow down, the controls for it. We'll put them all here on the wall. So they're very easy for the operators, for the technicians to get in and adjust and do whatever they need to do to them. Um, the, the level controls on the boiler, right there on the front, so that it's very easy to maintain, very easy to get to. Uh, some of the things that we've done in these units, these are what we call a super high efficiency unit. Uh, the boiler is a Victory Energy with uh, XID tubes in it, which makes it a very efficient boiler. And the burner, we went with the Limpfield burner. Uh, it's a pre-mix style burner, uh, extremely efficient, flat, uh, sub 3% O2, low to high fire, very reliable, no linkages, all servo motor controlled, all microprocessor controlled. So it's, it's an extremely reliable and very efficient system that we've just, it's, it's our standard now. Blue gas recirculation, again, that's all insulated, uh, keep the temperatures down in here. And, and then on all the limb field stuff, it's all auto flame control. It's a big touch screen uh, system, just a great reliable system for, these, for this equipment. Again, in, in keeping with the theme of designing this thing to make it easy to work on. You know, when you build these units, you first build them, things that seem like a good idea when you're building them, once you get them built and you have to work on them, don't seem such a, like such a good idea. Like the gas train running down beside the boiler. Not a good idea when you have to get back there and work on the control. So we've pulled all that out, got all the controls here, limit switches here, the fuel valves are here. Everything here works easy to get to. Uh, oil valves, same thing on the other side of the trailer. Easy to get to, easy to maintain. Again, you know, 35 years of, of trial and error, you finally get to where you think it's, hey, that we may be getting where we're, we're getting this thing right. Take, takes a lot of time, but we're there. So another thing we've done on the front of these boilers is work with Victory Energy to, uh, to work on the design of the front doors so that we could get those things apart. This is a 1,000 horsepower, 34,500 pounds an hour inside of a trailer. That's a lot in here, and we don't have a lot of room. You, can't, you don't have room to pull a, a full door open. So we did work with them on the design to cut those doors in half where we can manhandle those. Uh, makes it easy to maintain them. The other thing we've done is we've used a spray-on insulation on the whole front of the boiler, the doors, the entire front of the boiler, again, hold the heat down, hold the temperature down in these units to keep these things from being so hot. Uh, in the same theme, this auto flame panel has a chiller built into the side of it. So we maintain 80 degrees inside that auto flame panel. So that microprocessor, the flame safeguard control all built in together, it doesn't see those 110, 120 degree temperatures that you're going to see in this boiler room. Again, complete mobile boiler room is not complete without a blowdown separator. All the blowdowns, surface blowdown, water column blowdowns, bottom blowdowns are all brought back, tied into here with the drain in here so we can drain the boiler down, vent out the top, drain out the bottom. Again, complete mobile boiler room. Rear door, we've got a, this is a two pass, single rear door. Um, real heavy duty hinge with heavy duty bearings on there that, that uh, Victory has designed for us. Um, easy to swing, this door swings out very easily. Another thing we've done on the blowdown, bottom blowdowns, uh, the valves themselves, we've had to really pull those back to get them access to them from the rear of the bore. Normally they're up under the side of the bore where you don't want to be climbing under that um, access way there to get those valves. You want them back here on the back so that you can open them and close them standing here, get access to them. So everything in this unit is designed for easy access, um, easy to maintain, long-term longevity of the equipment itself. So looking at the outside of the trailer, the construction of the trailer itself, uh, we spent the better part of two years designing just the trailer to house all of this equipment. It's a 57 foot long trailer, not a 53, 57, which allows us to put the boiler, blowdown separator, deaerator, water softener, all the controls, everything in there. So you add power, fuel, water, and you get steam out. That's, in essence, that's what it amounts to. Um, we had to go with extra high side rails. Uh, this trailer is really heavy built, uh, 12 inch centers on, on the, the verticals and, and all the beams under it. Just a lot of stuff we had to do to this trailer to get it to withstand the, the weight that we've got. In the rear, we had to go to a tri-axle trailer. It's got three axles on the rear of it. Again, in order to spread that weight out to get us where we need to be. And we're just, you know, 
we're at 59,200 pounds on those three oxes, we're allowed 60,000. So we're right there, we're pushing the envelope, which is pretty typical of what we do. We also put an extra set of dollies back there. And that's there for two reasons. One, to help level the trailer along with the front set of dollies. And the other, more importantly, take the weight off of those tires and those axles and keep this thing steady once you get all that equipment in there full of water. All the, the connections are all down low with, with the exception of the steam. It's up high on the other side, but, but uh, uh, the uh, gas connections here, all the drain connections, feed water connection, um, all of it is right here close, easy access. The, uh, everything in this thing has separate connections. So we've got a, a, a drain for the deerator trap. That has to be run separately from the regular drains. Uh, the DA drain, that's not just a DA, that's everything in here that has a low point connection. Feed water pumps, feed water lines, um, water softer lines, all of that stuff comes this one. Feed water inlet, so you, you make up water coming into it. Uh, return, your return connection comes there and then the backwash from the water softer. This is separate from the other one because this is, is a brine, it's a salt brine. We don't want that to go with the regular drain, so that is a separate connection. Electrical connection on these units, single point, 480 volt. You bring in one line of 480 volt, hook it up to the unit. We have all the step down transformers, all the, the breakers, all the distribution center inside to distribute that power where it needs to go so you have one tie-in to make on the electrical connection. So in closing, this is the latest uh, innovation from the Ware Group. Um, thousand horsepower, complete mobile boiler room, which includes the water softener and deer editor. Everything sized for 100% capacity. Uh, we've spent six years designing these. We're now at 9, 10, something like that. So we, we've been at it for a while. Uh, just another innovation and showing that where is always steam.